region that is a, an example application to show the USB support called FileTile. And what I'm able to do is take the USB camera and I'm going to plug it into the side of the computer here and Air will recognize it and load it. I'm going to unplug the audio here so I can have room. Okay, got that plugged in. It should now notice the USB device was detected and then it should show some stuff um, in this application so we look at the content. There we go, cool. Oh. So it's now detected the content on the USB storage device. It's shown it to be here. You can see I've got some videos here and I've got the Premiere uh, logo on here because the video on my computer is associated with, with Premiere Pro. And so if I want to open that, we also support launching native applications on uh, Air 2. So I can just double click this content from the USB device. It launches Air, uh, launches Premiere Pro. Oh. We've gone backstage with Ted Patrick messing around with one of the computers. All right. Hey, Ted? Okay. <laughs> that's what Ted does. Okay, so that's an example of USB video. I'm going to unplug the device here. And, um, and um, the next thing I wanted to show you is an example of integration with local uh, processing on the computer. And this is just a, a demo of using Spotlight on the Mac as well as searching Google and Wikipedia. So if I want to search for um, a, uh, a car, for example, I'm doing research on Tesla, for example, I can do a search and it will find the local data on my computer that was delivered by Spotlight right away. So it's call calling native capabilities on the computer, as well as bringing in information, of course, via the web. So again, with Air blending the web experience and the local experience, so you can have one interface that's representing both of those worlds and bridging it together for you. So the other uh, thing I want to show is something that also is a major request, which is supporting the microphone and being able to record locally without having to go to a server. So we're supporting this now uh, in Air 2, and you can see I'll be able to, I can record a little message here. Hi, this is Kevin. And I can stop that and I should be able to play it back here. And this happened all locally on the computer in Air. Oh, got to turn up the audio there, guys. Unless I plugged it in the wrong slot. Hmm. Try it one more time. Hi, this is Kevin testing audio. Hi, this is Kevin testing audio. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, <laughs> if I want to make myself sound like a chipmunk, I can use local processing in error to do that. Hi, this is Kevin testing audio. All right, there we go. <laughs> okay. Um, so, in addition to these capabilities in error, uh, we're also working on. Um, supporting the integration of native code in a, in a much tighter way than you could do with Air 1.5. And the example I'm going to give you uh, here is League of Legends, which is a massively multiplayer game, uh, and it's using Air as the user interface for the game and setting up the game, and then integrating with native code to actually do the in-play uh, game rendering. And so we have an interface here where I can uh, read about the game and log in and view my profile and all the, all the stuff about the game. This is an Air application running on my computer. And I can click play. I'm still in air. I can choose the kind of game I want to play. I'll play a practice game. And uh, you can see there's a bunch of games that are happening. These are live games. Here's the one uh, backstage that we were playing. And you can see I can go into Summoner's Rift here, and I can join this game. Now, this, the, all this coordination and this multi-user communication is actually happening on the back end uh, with Lifecycle Data Services. So this is an Air application. Uh, Lifecycle DS is running on the back end. These massively multiplayer games have really significant uh, enterprise back ends to them, uh, though the business logic is, of course, different on these. Um, the business here is more about casting spells and killing monsters, but uh, here's my password, okay. Secret. Oh no. Did I type it wrong? Okay. Somebody changed my password. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, let's just switch the game play so you can see what that is. I'm sorry, I don't remember what the password is. So, Ian, if you could just switch the other machine, we can show it actually in play. Okay, so you can see the gameplay here. There's my avatar. That's my robot that I'm playing with. And you can see I can go uh, run around here and uh, go to where the monsters are. And I can help fight these monsters with my minions. Okay, so great example of native code being rendered here as well as an air front end to the game so you can get into it. Now our goal, of course, over time is to enable uh, the whole game uh, to be built in air and we'll continue to move forward on enabling new uh, capabilities for rendering and graphics and enable even more gameplay inside of air. So, air 2, some great progress in there. Now... Wow.
장난 아니다. Yeah, it's great to see Air evolving. Now with both Flash Player 10.1 and Air 2, we're working on multi-touch. And I'd like to show you where we are with multi-touch now. And I have over here an HP Touch Smart screen. And let me wake it up. Okay. And I've got a couple of examples to give you an idea of the multi-touch capabilities that are available to you now in, in, in Flash Player 10.1 and Air 2. So here's an example that was built actually by Synergy Systems. Thanks guys for building this. <laughs> and so we can see this is a calendar app. I can drag it around the screen with my finger. And if I want to expand it, I can use multi-touch to expand it. Wow. And we've put up the gesture events up on top if you guys want to. It's kind of closed captioning for developers. And um, I can interact here by swiping. You can see there's a gesture pan. Uh, I can go from month to month with my finger. And these events can be passed to the application both as high-level events uh, or you can get the raw event data. So you can either get a stream of gesturing events uh, that are high-level like pan and zoom and things like that, or you can get what looks like multiple mice all interacting with your application. So I can go to a particular week here uh, by zooming into the week here. <laughs> okay. 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 Oh, it's really working very well today. All right, so here's a day view, a uh, week view, and I can look and I can scroll around. You can see it's tracking uh, the content with my finger as I move it. Um, I can go into uh, the day. I can move these around just by touching and dragging them like this. Uh, if I want to edit these things, of course, um, in addition to the move events, um, I, can, I can double tap to open one. You can see it's touch tap. Uh, if I want, I can drag around the, the times here to uh, change the starting time. You can see it's touch move. And I can also change the type of event here. In this mock-up, I have to use two fingers to demonstrate rotation. So you can see I can spin this thing with my two fingers. So you can actually rotate things and get rotate events as well with these gestures. So some great uh, innovation here happening with multi-touch and a lot to learn as we start building all these uh, applications. Now, let me minimize this guy Come over here. Now, the next example I want to show you uh, is Flash Player 10.1 running in the browser. And this is an example of multi-touch running in a browser with Flash Player 10.1. And this is an example created by the XD team uh, to experiment with multi-touch. So I'm going to log in here. And it's going to load, uh, in this case, it's a place where people can post photos and videos and things like that. Um, here's a dog. So always have good, good to have pictures of dogs. There's a dog. Um, and you can see I can throw things around. Uh, if I want to, I can tap them and manipulate them. So if I want to resize that, I can do that. And all these events are being fed to the Flash application, uh, as you saw earlier. If I want as well, I can add things here with a little touch interface. So for example, if I want to take my photo, there's a camera in the touch smart, so I can say, hi. <laughs> But if I like that, I can keep it. There I am. Uh, I can rotate it right there. I can name it if I want to and move it around. So this is just a, a kind of a playground as we're learning about these events. And I encourage you to kind of do these same kinds of experimentation uh, applications to learn about multi-touch. Now the third example I wanted to give, the last one is um, New York Times Reader, which you know is out uh, already today running on air. And we worked on connecting up the multi-touch events with New York Times Reader. And so this, uh, isn't, this isn't the shipping version yet, but it's uh, in development right now. So I want to give you an example of what that's like. So I can, for example, touch the screen to simply change. Oh, all right, cool. Uh, something about devices. So I can read that. And I can use my finger uh, to scroll the news if I want to. So it's very easy uh, to read the news here. Uh, if I want to see that photo up here, I can just tap the photo. It comes right in. I can look at another photo if I want to. Um, and if I like, I can also zoom out completely into a preview mode. It's kind of like opening the newspaper up. And I can use my finger to just kind of browse the newspaper. And if I want, I can actually scroll and read, and, and read uh, different articles here. I can go up. If I want to tap on this one to enlarge it, I can. So it's a really natural interface for interacting with applications. And I think a lot of potential for us all uh, to, to build this into our apps. So thanks, guys, for the prototypes there. That was fun.